your screen as you just did. This meeting is being recorded. And so you can, um, in the future, go back and, and watch these through our NETA website. So tonight we're very excited. Please join, uh, join me in welcoming Dr. Ulf Muller for a discussion on selecting and preparing prospects for the World FEI Young Horse Championship. Ulf has spent 15 years as an auction horse rider at the Verden auction. And the last five of those years, he was their auction manager. For 19 years, he's worked for the famous PSI Stables under Ulrich Kesselman, and since 2017 has been working for Andrea Hauckstrand, moving between Wellington and the farm in Germany with his wife, Eva. He holds seven gold medals from the German Bundeschampionat, uh, the German Young Horse Championship, with numerous second and thirds as well. He and Eva have many wins at the World Championships and Bundeschampionat as a young horse trainer specifically. So Ulf, welcome, and I will pass it over to you. Yeah, thank you very much for having me. Uh, like I said before, this is my first time doing this on a Zoom meeting. I'm normally speaking to people and, 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 and see them, and so it's new, but uh, I hope you are not disappointed with what's coming out. So, okay, for sure, uh, when I was asked to do this, I was proud to be invited. And um, yeah, we are very happy to be now being here in, in uh, the winter season in Wellington for five years now. So you feel like a part of the community. But I also, in my whole life, I did a lot of clinics, a lot of uh, um, seminars and whatever about training of young horses. So there's a lot of questions a lot of advice people want because they always have the fear to do too much with the young horses and um, yeah that's why i think it's always good to speak a little bit about the training um, when we should talk about training horses for the world championships young horses that would be three attendances you need the best horse and don't disturb it and then you win so my idea is a little bit uh, more to start uh, young, let's say with the three-year-old. And uh, you can get the three-year-olds unbroken from the breeder. They, they have no knowledge, which sometimes is good because then you don't have to correct mistakes from others. You only have to work with your own mistakes or you buy them on a young horse auction like Myself, I worked 15 years for the Ferden auction, but there are a lot of auction places. And I think it's a good idea with the auction places because you can see a number of horses in a place, you know, they have a certain bet check. So it's easy to find horses there. But then comes, then you start. And the first thing what you do is you break the horse in. There are different ways of doing this. And uh, we always tried to get, let's say, the horse from the field, to get it a little bit used to the bridle, to the saddle. And then we try to start riding as soon as possible, before the horse gets too strong, before, before the horse has too much um, condition. Because the, the most important thing is that the young horse don't know how to get rid of you. And uh, so that's what we do. And then afterwards, we start with more longing, with getting the horse used to the reins and, and all these things. But there are different philosophies. Um, uh, the one trained more, they longe more, the horse gets stronger. We also get a lot of stallions from the stallion licensing. They have a, have a long time of longing. But on the other side, they have a lot of uh, experience. They know the girth, they know the saddle. They, often they are also a little bit ridden, so it makes it much easier. So then often the first question is, how often should I ride a three-year-old horse? And what we always say is, when you have a three-year-old, three times a week, a four-year-old, four times a week, a five-year-old, five times a week, and then it goes on like whatever. But I think that is a very good advice, like every second day, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, uh, and we have a lot of success with this. Then it depends a little bit what is the um, idea with the young horse. Uh, we have a lot of breeding stallions, three-year-olds we have to ride. So these horses, you cannot put in the field. You, you cannot put them together in groups. So you have to ride them. 
when you have a gelding, when you have a mare, and you have a um, you plan a future with the horse, you don't want to sell it as a three-year-old. Then it's also a good idea to break the horse in in spring, to get it used to everything, walk, trot, canter under saddle, and then put it back in the field. Give it another nice time during summer, and uh, also have it. And that's also an important thing: have it on low costs. And then in autumn, you bring the horse in again. After two days, you you are at the same point where you stopped in spring. So uh, that's that's a very nice way to survive one year because when the three-year-old horse is doing everything you expect from the horse it starts to get boring for the rider but also for the horse so this is a nice way to get the horse one year older i do have i have a question actually of coming yes. in um i have a member who's not very not overly familiar with your background is this generally uh discipline specific or is this something you would also use for any other uh discipline you're training a horse for now let's say like this in 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 germany we have a culture of of also of of bundeschampionat of the young horse championships for three years we had they will change it now for 22 they they will stop doing or having competitions for three-year-olds. So also for us now, everything will go one year later. But in but until now we had a, a three-year-old classes. That means also for yeah for selling reasons, for promotion reasons, for for stallions, we competed in the championships, and then you have to ride the three-year-old horse a little bit more. But um, that is also, uh, I think now uh, for dressage, for jumping, normally you start jumping, let's say four year old, five year old. So always the jumpers are a little bit behind. Yeah. And I don't know, eventers and all this, I don't know. But the jumpers are normally one year later than we are with the young dressage horses. Thank you. But also, uh, again, coming back now to the three year olds, you know, like you see a lot of people not touching the horses not being saying oh this is a young horse we, we are not allowed to do too much and in my opinion that is totally wrong a young horse knows nothing it it it, it don't know how to start canter from the mother milk they they have to learn everything so when you remember when you when you want to canter the first time under saddle what are you doing you push them so much forward and trot that they fall into canter which means you make a lot of efforts to get him into uh, into the canter you make a lot of efforts to do the first circle to do the first diagonal what i want to say with this is you come from a lot during the education to less and a lot of these people which have not so much experience they think Oh, it's young horse. We are not allowed to touch it. We are not allowed to use the, the legs on the horse, to use the reins and the mouth. And that's the a young horse needs a lot of guidance. And from, from a lot, you come to less. So that is very important. You are allowed to touch it. It helps the horse. It gives the horse confidence when you are there. And not when you leave it totally alone. You're not putting the legs. If the horse is a little bit hot, if the horse is a little bit running, take takes the spurs away, feel the horse with your legs, that gives a lot of confidence to the horse. So that's, I think, one very, very important thing. So what do we have for the young horses? When we show them, we have like a gates class, which means walk, trot, canter, and a little bit like, like some accent, uh, uh, lengthening of strides and canter, lengthening of the steps and trot. But that's it. And then, uh, so... They don't need so much training. If they have quality, this is easy to handle. Then we come to the year four, where the horse is allowed. Is the horse a little bit stronger? The horse is a little bit older. The bones are more ready. The whole horse is a little bit more ready. And um, so, like we said in the beginning, now we would maybe go to four times a week riding the horse. But everything and maybe i say it twice during this session maybe three times whatever everything so you have to always listen to the horse the horse tells you 
what it, what it wants. The horse tells you if it needs a little bit more work, if it needs a little bit less work, if it's a little bit bored, if it's uh, uh, too much for it. So you have to listen to the horse. The horse tells you what it wants. And uh, um, and also, you know, like it's the same like we have these kids, you know, they are jumping over one class in, uh, in the school because they are so intelligent. And we have the same in horses. We have gifted horses and, and we have slow learners. They all will learn it, but with in, in different time frames. And uh, uh, so we should never be disappointed when my horse is a little bit behind, maybe the horse from a friend. No problem. Later, when we arrive, maybe we are even faster than, than him, you know. So four-year-old now, we come a little bit closer, you know. We, maybe we are allowed to start canter from walk. We work on the canter. Uh, uh, we collect the canter a little bit more. We also find, and that is a little bit talent from the horse. Maybe we had to say this in the beginning, uh, but all we say it in the end, what is a good dressage horse? So maybe we, we finish with this. So we have this horse now, we start a little bit more. We are allowed to ask a little bit more. We ask for a little bit more collection we try to bring the weight from the front legs to the hind legs but everything without looking on the watch without saying oh i have to write in the books it's saying you have to write an hour that is stupid you cannot train a horse with a watch you can only train a horse with feeling and the feeling tells you my horse is tired and if the horse is tired after 15 minutes you stop and then maybe you take it out again in the afternoon, put it in the walker, let it walk for some condition. And the next day the horse is fresh and maybe you ride 40 minutes. It depends on every day. Also, what you need is a plan. You think, okay, now my horse is ready. Like I said before, for example, to start canter from walk. Then I sit on my horse and I feel, oh, not today. So today, even trot is difficult. Then I have to change my plan. I don't have to say, okay, I plan today, canter from walk, and now I have to do it. No, you do it when you have the feeling the horse is ready for it. And that's the most and very important thing. Okay. So the four-year-old year is a little bit more exciting, but still a little bit boring. Because also when you compete, it's another Gates class. So it's more or less the same things uh, uh, you do with the three-year-old horses. But now we come to the year five and now it gets more interesting because now you can really start working. You can collect your horse. And with our modern horses, uh, from, from the development of breeding, from um, we get so much quality, we get so much cadence already from nature in the trot that we can work on this and you can use it now. We can we speak the first time about collection. We speak about collected trot, about collected canter. We have this counter canter to train the balance. So there is, uh, yeah, there is much more to train. So the, your training is also much more interesting in comparison to the to the training with the younger horses so um, and then it depends also what your plan is if you want to do the championships five-year-old then you have to stay a little bit with the counter canter because you cannot start directly uh, with the flying change so uh, but if you say oh i'm not interested in this and my horse offers me the feeling now i can ask and there's the flying change why should i take it away because I said you are one year too young. That's that's not necessary. I know horses, they are five and they know the whole Grand Prix because they are gifted. They are smart. They are, uh, um, yeah, they are willing to do everything. They are so intelligent. You show it one time and they know it. So why taking this away? But this is not a horse for the young horse class because in the young horse class, you need walk, trot, canter, and and not let's say a horse which when you take the reins a little bit it starts to piaf. But it's a positive thing. But then you say no, I don't do the young horses. I wait till the horse is ready for for Grand Prix. 
or on the way to Grand Prix. And uh, also, um, if you are not so much interested in the three and four, I think it's a very good time now to start also to compete with the young horses because the horses are more on your aids, the horses are more listening to your aids. So also when you go to a horse show first time and, and the horse is excited, the horse is impressed by, by the whole atmosphere, the horse is listening to your aids and you are able to help the horse in the, in the new circumstances where the horse is maybe a little bit afraid, a little bit uh, wild. And, and so you can make a good picture, especially in our times uh, where we are very much, much under supervision, you know, from all this animal right people and whatever. And you have the neck a little bit too round. Everyone is complaining. So it's also important that you only start competing when you're really ready with your training at home. I always say at home you need 100% that at the show you get 80. And that's uh, uh, how it is. You need control at home and you cannot expect that you go to a horse show and by surprise it's better than at home. That's from my experience from, I don't know, 45 years never working. I need it perfect at home and then I get a good result in the horse show. I do have a well, couple questions. The, um, yes. So when selecting the young dressage prospect, how much do you consider bloodlines into this? Um, the attitude and what you see as natural should talent? We not, should we not, uh, I, I'm, I'm happy to answer now, but maybe should we not put it a little bit to the end when we yes. talk a little bit about the criterias? And then sure. I think this is also a part for sure of the criterias. Uh, uh, what is a good dressage horse? Yeah, absolutely. You know? So and now coming back to the five-year-old, and now we are all we arrive at our theme, world championships. What you have to, if you decide for this, you need a little bit different plan. And I only can uh, uh, describe how it is in Germany to qualify for the world championship and how it is in Holland, because this is both uh, selection ways. Uh, what I know because we, we, we did it and I think it's also the most difficult countries if you want to compete because both countries say we only send German horses we only send Dutch horses never the Dutch breeding society would send a German horse as a representative for Holland and also the Germans would not do this and I'm always saying to qualify for Germany is more difficult than winning a medal in the world championships. Because when we start in the first selection process, we will have around 40, 50, five-year-olds starting there. We will have 30, 40, six-year-old and 25 to 37-year-old. And then you have to compete two days in the uh, uh, Warendorf in our center and uh, then they decide who is allowed to go to the second qualifier four weeks later and when you have a bad day what can happen with the with a young horse or the horse is not really fit then you're out and then your dream <laughs> all your dream is over in holland they have a little bit different system they have like four or five times you have to go there and always you qualify one round more uh, but they also have it a little bit more also like a training supervision because they don't have so much the system we have in Germany that you go to trainers. They're more the, the, the train, this selection day is also like a, a, a training day. So they have a little bit different system. But again, to qualify for Germany is the most difficult thing because especially five-year-olds, the test is not so difficult. And you really need a weapon. You need a, a, a top, top horse. Otherwise, you have no chance. Even if Germany is allowed to send seven horses in each age group. So we have uh, the biggest contingent, but still it's very difficult. So you have to be, you really have to make a plan for yourself that, um, that the, high, the first highlight of the year is the qualifier and not the world championships. 
because and 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 then that is what I always found a little bit different, difficult. Yeah, to keep the horse on this level, this young horse, it's difficult with the young horses to have two three peaks per year, which is the first qualifier, the second qualifier, and the world championships. Uh, uh, even when you look at the top top Grand Prix riders, uh, they compete two three times, four times per year, not more, because it's also difficult for them to keep the horses on 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 this high level. And now you can imagine how difficult it is with a young horse, where it's not only a result of training of strength, where it's also a little bit a result of excitement. You know, the horse comes to a, a um, foreign place and it's a little bit awake and excited but because you have the swoonness you have it on your eight then you can have a great performance but also it can be that this circumstances work a little bit against you and especially for us we have a lot to do with this breeding stallions and um and then, you know, other horse is talking somewhere and your horse starts to answer and they have a nice conversation and you are sitting there and can do nothing. So all this can happen. But that's also the fun. And that's also why we in our young horse community are quite good friends because we all help each other because we know the one year you win because you have the best horse and the next year the other one wins because he has the best one. So we are good friends. Okay, then we are five. Hopefully we are the five year old world champion uh, because we had a, yeah, it's a good horse, which walked, which did everything good. And the, also important when you are at the world championships, you really have to get the first day. I never saw someone winning the world championships five year old who was placed 15 on the first day. It's not working. If you are not top five, you have no chance to win. And uh, that's how it is, but that's dressage. So, and, what is, uh, um, we have someone asking, what is this, the scoring system? Do you, do you get, is it cumulative points that build? Uh, yeah, you get, it's the same like everywhere. And that's also a nice thing. Uh, uh, that also this five, six, seven year old classes they are FEI classes, which means in South Africa, in America, in Argentina, in Australia, in Germany, everywhere we write the same test. And it's always uh, five marks, which is walk, trot, canter, uh, it's submissiveness and general impression. And general impression is, uh, um, it's not, um, uh, um, a result of the other four marks, it's also a little bit the future as a dresser shows. Yeah, so uh, um, and I think that is also a good mark in a way when the judges are using it in the right way, uh, also to correct sometimes things where you say, okay, the walk was a little bit uh, under tension. But we had good parts, but we had to mark the horse down a little bit because of the walk or the walk mark a little bit down. But still, we see a big potential in the horse, you know. So it's not that you say we have four marks and because they are all eight, also the general impression has to be an eight. Yeah, it also can be a nine because you see a big future. Yeah. Okay. So, but the, the judging system is the same five and six year old. So now we come to the six year old. And now it gets really interesting because now we have, and I think that is one big step in the training of a horse. Now we come to the flying change. And uh, that's also something very interesting in, in our market. A lot of clients we have, a lot of people, if it's in America, in Europe, wherever, they love to buy a horse which already has a confirmed flying change because they're a little bit afraid to teach it to the horse. And, and they are, it's, it's not the easiest part, you know, like to really have a correct flying change, not one jump behind or late behind. Um, and this really to, to uh, teach it to the horse that later on it's uh, uh, doing it on your eight in the test. That's, um, yeah, that's 
needs some some knowledge and some and which is in my opinion a very important word self confidence for you as a trainer as a rider that you know you started and then you see a problem and that you said no 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 my way my idea is right i go with it i stay with it and um, in in one week in two week in four weeks we see the result even if it seems to be very difficult today uh, that you stay with your way and that you don't change your way every day because you feel ah oh, it's not working no 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 you have to be and this is also one very important thing before you take too much out of the horse you take too much Uh, confidence too much willingness out of the horse because you are not getting it ask someone for help there are people who have more knowledge who have more experience especially there are really specialists which can a black and white cow teaching a flying change and uh, uh, so ask this person don't don't be too proud to say no 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 it's my horse i have to do it by my own that's stupid ask someone for help let him train it to the horse and then he shows you how it works and then you also can do it why why be be so tough to the horse why why making it crazy and and like i said losing the confidence uh, ask someone and they will help you they are proud they are happy to help you and maybe you can help them with some other thing as every rider has a special talent Yeah, and others can make a ride a very nice trot. They can make every horse passaging around. So there were times when when all the people were too proud. And today I think it's yeah in our family of trainers uh, it's stupid to be too proud. So I think that's also a very important advice, and especially at the flying change when the horse knows or learned always to be late behind. It's that's difficult to fix, yeah. So, ask there's someone. A, there's a question about um, horses around this age. You mentioned before that you may have a gifted five or six year old that that may be offering the Grand Prix movements. Um, are they? Do they have the strength at this age to to train to that, or do you have to kind of take them out of the young horse competitions altogether and wait a couple of years until everything balances out? You know, it's like when a horse offers you a passage offers you some steps of of uh, piaf a flying change whatever horses can offer you take it as a gift don't ask the horse every day to do it take it because it's for free but not press the horse to do it when the horse is offering it pet it be happy with it but not say i want it now every day it's playing it's a little bit like like having uh, uh, the horse enjoying uh, what what they can do and and um, don't say it's the same for example maybe you know i i forget always tell talking about thing also when you go somewhere and in every book it says you have to work or start your work with a walk on a long rein for sure that's perfect but If you come somewhere and the horse is excited and fresh and a little bit wild, better start trotting and cantering instead of holding the walk and destroying the rhythm of the walk. If the horse is so under under power, let the power go out of the horse. And when you feel now the horse is relaxed, then you then you walk. And that's the same with this: what a horse offers you for free. When the horse wants to passage. Pet it, but don't ask it. Don't ask the horse every time for the passage, because then they got because then it starts to be work for them, and then they got uh, tired of it. It's also the same. Uh, we talked about the flying change. We talked about half passes, whatever, which comes next. Don't ride your horse half an hour till it's really tired, and then you start asking for a flying change. Because then the, the attention of the horse is already gone. The horse is tired. New things do in after a part of of uh, warming up. 
Then you do the new thing when the horse is fresh. When you look at the schedule from school kids, the, the, the difficult things are in the morning. And in the close to lunchtime, it's sport, it's, it's, it's arts, it's whatever. Where, where what they also can do when they are a little bit tired in the brain, not, not in the body, but in the brain. Our horses got also tired in the brain. And, and, and because the muscles are tired, because they said, oh, now I did 15 rounds of trot lift and 15 right and a little long time canter. And now he wants the flying change. And the horse said, Ugh, I'm already tired. That's not working. New things, not in a wild freshness, but in the beginning of the real work after the warm up. Then you have a fresh horse which can understand things and is willing to understand things. So, also in the six year old class, we have the half passes. I do want to mention, I've, I've been a terrible timekeeper. We are at eight o'clock, just so you know. I'm sorry. Yeah. Talking about half passes. Now we have our, our world champion from the year before who got a 10 in the trot. And now we ask for half pass. So horse cannot start the first ideas of shoulder in and half pass in a trot for a 10, which means you have to go down to a, let's say the numbers, to a trot six and start the lateral work. Teach the horse to cross the legs and, and all this and the right bending, the right flexion. Uh, always, uh, and we all know the horses from Isabel Wert doing half passes like no one else and every horse from her. And I always act, how are you doing this? Why is your horses doing so nice half passes? And then she said, you know, because I'm not I'm not flexing them. I'm only make sure they first they really cross their legs. And maybe that's right. And, and, and I also tried it and it works. But then when you really have a coordination of the legs and you give the aid and the horse knows what to do, then you again work on the trot and try to take the bigger trot in the, in the half pass. But they cannot do it with the 10 trot in the beginning. The same is like we said before with the flying change. If you have a canter for a 10 and, and the canter for a 10 for a five-year-old is maybe a different canter than a canter for a 10 with a six-year-old horse because you do more different things and you need more collection. You need more on the hind legs. And uh, uh, we all know that sometimes a canter for a 10 can be also a little bit in the way of your further education because the canter is too big. Yeah, and it's too hard for the horse to collect later on uh, to do a pirouette, to do the zigzag and whatever we have in the higher sport. So also, and that is what we were talking in the end, the, the, the selection is, is uh, um, in the end the key to success. So, but again, back to the six-year-old, we have now, uh, uh, first of first time we have extended trot, uh, not only medium trot, we have uh, a shoulder in, we have a vault, we have nearly in the final test, nearly a pre St. George part of, of the trot work. And then we have uh, uh, in the final test, four flying changes, two on the diagonal and two on the long side from counter canter to the uh, uh, inside canter. So, and that is uh, uh, a quite tough test. And um, you all, sometimes it's really also funny with this. You have sometimes horses like February, March, they are doing very easy the flying changes. And then you have a time, they are not reacting anymore. And then you really got under pressure. And you say, oh, shit. I was so proud in spring that how easy the changes are. And now I have problems and that can happen. Don't get nervous from this, it comes back. The thing is, again, throughness. When the horse is not really through, when the horse is on the way to the flying change, leaning on the bit, discussing with your hands, discussing in the mouth with you, it's not listening to your legs. Then it's only listening to the mouse. And we all know the mouse is the most sensitive part of the horse and uh, so if there are if uh, if there are problems in the mouth the horse is not focusing on your aids 
So make sure that this works. Maybe also, and that is a general thing in training, make a, sometimes a step backwards. Go back to basics when you nearly have everything and, 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 and improve your lessons in better throughness. And this, this basic training is also like a training for the strength of the horse. And when the horse is stronger, it can do the lesson better. And it also, uh, yeah, listens to because uh, the attention level is also growing. It's not only that they are stronger, they also uh, uh, listen better and longer to you. I had horses in my life where Sandrohit, good example. When I wrote Sandrohit, there were days and he loved to canter. I, I had a week where I maybe did one round trot where I said, okay, is he, is he sound? For this, I need to trot in the beginning. Feeling is the horse even because you don't feel it in the canter. And then I cantered. And I cantered maybe a week without working trot. And then I come back to trot and I had twi two marks better trot because the horse was stronger. Every horse like, has a favorite gait. Some of them like more to trot, others like more to canter. So make the main training in the gait the horses like, because that's easier for them. And uh, if, if, they, if they don't like to canter and you canter the whole time, you always fight against them. But if you have them really through, if you have them on the hind leg and trot, if, you, if your half holds are working, if the half holds are accepted, it's easy than to canter because the horse is also listening better to the half holds in canter. And that's what, what, you, what, what you do. You know, you never think the horse forgets how to canter, forgets how to trot when you are not doing it for a while. Again, you need a plan and a, a result you are working for. And, 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 and this is also very, very individual from every horse. All the books we have, all this uh, um, gymnasium of the horse and whatever, all these famous books, which I was reading all of them, but it's a general guideline. If there would be a book telling you everything about every horse, it would be too, too big to even to carry it on a truck. So, and also you cannot train a horse from a book. You cannot ride, uh, you cannot learning how to ride a bicycle from a book. You only can feel it and you always fall down and then you stand up and you start again. And then it comes the day when you know it a little bit. And that's the same with training a horse. You know, you cannot find a problem, go off the horse, walk into the living room, take a book out, check what, you, what should I do now, go back on the horse and pet it or give him something with the whip. No, it has to happen immediately. A very clear thing. And that is what is so important and what makes a difference between a good and a bad rider to make the right decision. Do I have to pet it or do I have to say, hey, that's not allowed. Yeah, clear things. Like kids where you cannot talk to, where you cannot explain things. It's very, no, that's not allowed. Yes, you're doing well. That's what we have here in America. You know, every corner you hear, you're such a good boy. You know, it's the way you say it. You know, that makes a horse uh, 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 feel, yes, now I'm doing something right. Also, what I see a lot and what I really hate, you know, people, they are cantering and cantering and cantering one round after the other. No, when you have the best feeling, when you said, oh, now I have a great feeling in, in my canter. Then you make a transition to walk, pet your horse, give it a break. Then you start again. And if you do it correct, you, you maybe arrive at this perfect feeling after four canter jumps. Then you do two, three more, make a break, uh, pet your horse, walk. This is how horses understand. Also, like the horse is doing something wrong, you bring really like a tension in your whole body. And then the horse is doing something good and you relax. That tells the horse, now I'm doing something right. And this small science is enough. I see people working very hard and long time on the connection. 
and they have a nice connection and they give everything away and pet the house and you are doing well. Wrong. Now you have your connection, now use it. And not giving it away in the moment you have it. So all these are very, also very, very important things in, in, in the training. Uh, uh, doing the right thing and not losing the confidence of the horse. You can do right thing, wrong things. Can happen, happens to all of us. We are all learning from mistakes. Also horses are learning from mistakes. You start, and, and, but, but what is important, you, you have to show them what is right. If you start the canter and they go out with the neck or they start the canter over trot or whatever they do, say, okay, walk, we try again. And sometimes you try 20 times. But the horse, only when it's how you want it, then you say that's good. It takes nerves. Sometimes it takes really nerves. And sometimes, you know, you don't go on your horse and say, oh, I only have time to ride 10 minutes. It's never working. Then you are sitting there two hours. You, you have to calm down inside. You have to say, okay, um, if it's not working today, it's working tomorrow. And if it's not working tomorrow, it works next week. Everything you do with over pressure goes backwards. Also a thing to, to talk about is, is the horse not willing or not able? That's also a decision you have to make. And you make the whole time in your training, you're making decisions. And you say, okay, now I pet him, now I, I touch him with the whip, for example. Not, not as a punishment, but as say, hey, concentrate, don't do this. That was not correct. And, 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 and I hate when all these top riders in the world looking into a TV camera saying, we all do it with sugar and padding only. That's not working. And we all know this. Yeah. But the key to success is not losing the confidence of the horse. The horse should not be afraid from you. If you open the door, the horse should come to you and not run away from you. And if you get this, you do everything right. Yeah, good. So, and now comes the highlight, seven years old. We also have uh, um, world championships now for seven years old. I don't know how many years now. And uh, yeah, that's, then we are talking about Priest and George. So this horse is, is not a Priest and George. Some parts are even more difficult to ride than a Priest and George because they mix it so crazy. Uh, I don't know who was, if the, the person who did this test was a little bit unhappy or whatever, but uh, uh, you know, like when you look at the priest and George, you, everything you do on the left hand, you do on the right hand. And here it's, you do trot, then you do walk, then you do trot again, then you do a half pass, then you do a shoulder in, then you do a pirouette, then you do a half pass. It's a little bit confusing. But on the other side, um, it's also, yeah, we are seven now. The horse has to show now how good it is. There's no, no hope anymore. Now with a seven-year-old, you know what you have. And that's also what they prove. Before there was a question about judging. In the seven-year-old, they do... Um, they do two ways. They also have the one mark, which is uh, the gates, like in the five and six year old. But there's also another group of judges, normally two. Um, they judge the test, like a normal test with a mark for every lesson. And then the final result is the mix of both. So often this, this uh, gates marks are a little bit higher than the, than the marks for the test. Yeah. So that's, uh, yeah, a little bit the levels. We owned, we know, we all know this horses, uh, which are, let's say, world champions five, six, seven, which I think is a, is a great thing. Uh, now in America, you have Fiontini. You know, she was also a triple uh, world champion. So she's now under the American flag. Congratulations. 
I saw her today. She looks really good with the new rider. So, um, yeah, that's a little bit the story of, of the training. For sure, I forgot a lot of things. And that's why when we talked a little bit about before, I'm more than happy to answer some questions because often from the questions, you got a little bit an idea uh, what all you forgot. Good. Fair enough. Uh, so um, just in relation to the to the discussion about the seven-year-old horse, you were saying you kind of, you know what you have there. Um, does that also relate to horses who are coming new to dressage? Can you use the young horse tests at later ages? Would that help if you have, say, a thoroughbred off the track who you are going to now use? Would you turn them out for a couple months and start them at four years old? Or because the ages are off, is that no longer appropriate? Now, I must say, you know, like, like traveling all over in the world, always there is a question and the main question everywhere in the world is how much am I allowed to do? How much uh, uh, can I do with my horse? And that why uh, when we had this five, six, seven year old tests for young horses, I was very happy. And I see this tests as a guideline what a young horse could do. But we talked about it. There are sm slow learners. They are fast learners. Not every horse is ready in August or not even talking about August. When we talk, the world championships are normally beginning of August, which means the first qualifier is in, in for us in Germany is in June. So I need the horse ready in June that not every horse is ready because it was ill. It came to me too late. The former owner took it very slow. There's a lot of reasons why a horse is a little bit behind. And, and it's absolutely fine. It does not mean that the horse, which is not ready for the, let's say, flying changes in, in, in June, that later on it's a, it's a bad horse or it's not learning. And every horse learns the flying change. But some horses, uh, it takes a little bit longer. The experience, and that is a good thing. And uh, um, I think also something for these people who have a horse, which is a little bit slow learner. Often, the flying changes from the horses, which are a little bit slow, are better later on than the ones uh, uh, who learned it very quickly, because you have to put some much more efforts, much more concentration, much more focus on the flying change. And then often you have a much better quality, but they all learn it. Yeah. But again, it's not, it's not a must, it's a guideline. Yeah. And, and uh, uh, I know horses, um, Legolas from Stefan Peters, he did a one five-year-old test uh, as a, or as a, he did one L level, we call it L level is like a second test second uh, level test as a five-year-old he was not placed and the the next show he did was uh, beginning of 10 in uh, on the west coast and he won a grand prix so that's also a good part you can have a horse you can train it at home until pre st george for example and you never show that's fine the dressage ring is always only a sand place with a white fence around, not more. Not like a jumper. If you have a jumper which is not competed, let's say as a five-year-old, latest as a six-year-old, you can forget. No, no hunter, no rider, no jumping rider is touching a horse which never competed as a six-year-old. Because uh -huh. they need much more experience, they need much more, yeah, they have to attack everything what looks like a jump. So they need more, more training. And our horses, when you have them under control at home, normally you have no problems in this centering. Okay. Yeah. Uh, we have a question around Cavaletti or cross-country work or things outside of, uh, do you use those methods maybe to strengthen your horses? Is there an appropriate age guideline, not the rule? I Like we said, um, I don't know if it came so, so clear over, but there is a lot of boring times especially with three and four year old horses 
you know, when you go on the horse and you feel everything is there, the horse is listening to you, the shrewdness, so the, sometimes you don't know what to do with the horse. So then I think it's very, very welcome to walk, to trot over cavalettis, to go uh, outside, to hack, to canter in the light seat, whatever you can do to make it uh, interesting. The only thing what I always uh, um, to take care for is, I always said that the, the 2060 dressage ring, this is like a working place. The horses have to know when they go on this ring, there it's a little bit more serious. I never would allow them to buck there, to be out of my control. But when you have the facilities and you have like a big grass field, a big jumping field, let them do whatever they want there. But the 2060, that's a working place. And horses are like this, you know, like they know I go in there and I know in all friendship without pressure, but this is where they work. And uh, that's sometimes you see people let them do funny things there and that's not good. Also, maybe that's also something which is important to mention because very often uh, people say, oh, today he only gets light work. Absolutely good. But what means light work? A horse don't know the saying a little bit. Yeah, they don't know this. If you allow them, let's say, to canter, not on the hind leg, not through the neck, away from everything, and then you say, okay, this is fine for today. The next day the horse says, hey, what's wrong? Yesterday I was allowed to do this, why not today? And then you have more trouble after a day of light work to what your goal was. For me, light work means the same quality of trot, the same quality of, ten, of canter, but less. Instead of, let's say, working in half an hour, working 15 minutes and make longer walk period, uh, parts. This, maybe the horse is not sweating, but when I canter, the horse should canter as good as the horse can do it. It should trot as good as the horse can do it because they don't understand a little bit. Yeah. So imagine that that kind of feeds to our next question a little bit, um, asking what you do to prepare a young horse for the busy young horse show environment, if it's used to a quiet. Yeah, that's, that's uh, first of all, you, you, during training your horse, you also find out a little bit about the mentality of the horse. You know how, how they are reacting on, on uh, uh, different things. And we all know when you are always at the same indoor or at the same place and then, then you change the flower pots. The horses get, get nearly crazy about this. And then you think, oh, oh, what should happen when we come to a horse show? And then there is everything new. And uh, uh, then they are so, uh, maybe afraid is the wrong word, but respectful that they are happy that you as a rider are a guide for them. I only can say when you have the horse under control, when the horse is on your aids, when the horse is listening to your aids, when the horse is trusting you, and then you come to the first horse show, then you are able to help the horse because uh, the horse is listening to you. Maybe the first time on a horse show, you lunge it for a moment on the long line. You know, that's a little bit the first freshness is out. But in the end, the key is that you, that the horse is following your aids, and then normally you should have no problems uh, on horse shows. Okay, thank you. Um, I'm going back uh, a bit to Sally's question about selecting the young dressage prospect. Yeah, that's what, that what we them. had to talk about. Absolutely right. Uh, yeah, that is a little bit the uh, uh, um, question, and maybe I, I make it quick. We start with folds. You know, when you look at a foal and you see, wow, this foal is trotting like no tomorrow and you, everyone is excited. And then they said, you know, look, this foal was so expensive because it trotted one round after the other perfectly without a rhythm mistake. I don't want this foal because this foal don't likes to canter. 
It only likes to trot. The best foal is a foal which makes five, four or five really nice steps of trot and then starts to canter because it likes both. I also made the mistake once. I bought a two and a half year old mare. The same thing. She trotted and trotted and trotted. And then I wanted to uh, undersaddle. I want to canter her. Disaster. When you look at the Grand Prix, half of the Grand Prix is canter. So you need, in the end, if we talk about a good dressage horse, you need a horse with a very good canter, an uphill canter, not a big, big ground covering canter, a nice uphill canter with a nice front leg and, and that is the general keyword with a nice balance. That's, that you start canter and you have the feeling you can have a cup of coffee and a newspaper in your hand and the horse is still cantering. That is the best canter, that you don't have this feeling that every canter jump you have to push a little bit, you have to help a little bit to keep the horse in canter. A horse which is in, from nature in, 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 in um, balance in canter, that's the best what you can have. Next is walk. You need a good walk, but you, the most, you don't need the huge ground cover, like what they say, overstepping three, four hoofs. No, what you need is a nice rhythm. And we all know this V, what the legs are making. This is that the, that the rhythm of the, of the canter is correct. And that there is like a freedom in the shoulder, but not, not more. And then, and, 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 and also what is very important, there's only one good way of walk and there's only one good way of canter. But there are several ways of good trot. You know, there are, and, and, and we all know on the trot, you can work the most. You have a horse with a lot, with a flat trot, with a little bit long hind legs. And then because of the strength, because what we said in the beginning, because of doing a lot of canter work, strengthening the horse. And then comes the day where the horse starts to carry behind. And what a wonder, the, the, the wizard comes up and with the wizard comes the front legs up. I, I know uh, Totilas, uh, uh, he was, uh, uh, I was, I think, number five at this world championships and he was number four. So he was directly in front of me with a girl and the front legs went in this direction and the hind legs went in this direction. And then Edward gets the hall and mocks the, the, the thing together and then he starts to trot. So on the trot, you, we can work a lot. Bloodlines was the question. For sure, bloodlines are interesting with the stallion, with the mare, because you have also the, the breeding, or there is a possible breeding idea. But also for a gelding, uh, um, there are things where you say, okay, this is a Vitalis, a Vivaldi, and you see a lot of similar things. You see like, for example, a lot of this V blood, Vitalis, Valverde, they have two trots. They have a very, very normal trot. And then with the training, with the collections, and they start to trot like no, like unbelievable. But you have to produce it a little bit. But you know uh, that this is uh, um, um, uh, working. De Niro, and we, he is dead now, so we can say uh, they all had a very good talent for Piaf and Passage, but the lateral work is sometimes, you know, this bending, this, this half passes, that was not the easiest for a lot of these horses. So it's not like um, that it's, again, in general, you can find a De Niro with beautiful half passes, but you find a lot of similar things. And that's why I think it's also important for a good rider, for a good trainer, to have a little bit knowledge about bloodlines. Sometimes you meet people and buy, I always make a joke out of that and say, hey, what is the breeding of your horse? And a lot of the people don't know this. And I say, I, this is also not, let's say like a little bit like a respect to the horse to know a little bit about what is your partner? What is his name? What is his father, his mother and whatever? So uh, I think that is important. And again, also the bloodlines gives you sometimes information. I would never say, I don't want this 
bloodlines. For a while, for example, jazz, everything with jazz, everyone was afraid. Sandro hit, they all was afraid. But in, in our modern times, the breeders found out how to use jazz, not combining jazz with the crazy Dutch mare, but jazz combined with the Hanoverian Donahal mare could make a beautiful horse. And Sandro hit with a little bit electric blood. For example, Sandro hit with uh, jazz, perfect. Because most of the Sandro hits were a little bit too lazy. And uh, so also the breeders know how to mix things, they find out. And uh, so I would never say never. I always would see the horse, give the horse a chance, but when I look at horses, never be lazy. When you have the chance to sit on the horse, even if you really, really like it from the ground, and even if you only have your riding boots and you only have a jeans on, jump on the horse and do some rounds, get the feeling, because the feeling on the horse is the most important thing. If the feeling is good, but it looks normal from the ground, the horse will follow the feeling. Sooner or later, the look will be as it already feels for you. But it will never be the other way around, that you have a bad feeling on top and it looks good from the ground, not for long. If your feeling is good, you are riding good on your horse and then the horse will start to shine. Thank you, that's good. That's good. I, I wanted to just relay to you that you're getting a lot of thank yous in the chat and that uh, this has been really helpful even for people who don't uh, deal with young horses at all. It's it's. Uh, wonderful information. Um, and I'm going to close one more, one last wild card question for you before Iris. Yeah, thinks you're I have nothing more to do. So we can, <laughs> you know, when I got warm, I like to really talk about this. <laughs> well, we have a, I have a question about uh, some other disciplines like polo, for example, uh, cloning is a, a becoming a thing uh, for uh, horses who are competitive and being used. Do you see that happening? And also what's your gut feeling for it? Is that just? Uh, maybe I'm a little bit old generation. I, um, my father was a successful horse breeder and I remember the times uh, when you know, uh, and for us in Hanover, it was a, the state stud in Celle, and they had a lot of different places in whole lower Saxony where they sent the stallions for the breeding season. And I remember the time when we were riding the mare to the, to the stallion place, took the saddle off, brought her in, uh, uh, the stallion jumped on the mare, as the breeding, we put the saddle back on and rode home. So, and at that time, you know, from the bloodlines, you know, or you knew where the horse was born. Then comes the artificial insemination, which I think is a very positive thing because it saves the stallions. They only have to jump once a day. They can, uh, they very fast learn when they go this direction, they go to breeding. When they go that direction, they go for riding. So it makes it also much easier for us as riders. Also the, the uh, let's say this, all these illnesses like CEM and whatever, all this is, we don't have it anymore. So all this is much better, but I think this is enough. Then we, the next thing is embryo transfer. Okay, when I have a very, an older successful mare and I don't want that, that she is giving birth to the foal by her own, also makes sense. When you have, there are mares, you know, they are pregnant for nine months and then every time they are losing the foal because the body is not really fulfilling it. Also, okay, but only to have a three, four, five year old sound mare and to get 10 embryos out of the mare every year for, for money, I don't think that's, that's good for our horse world. If I have 10 full brothers from one year, that makes not really sense for me. And uh, uh, then the next thing is sexing. That's also possible that you get like only mares, only stallions. 
that's not good. That's not, that's too much into the nature. And cloning, for polo, maybe it's okay, because what, what you want from a polo pony is intelligence and fast. Next is maybe jumpers. What you want is scope, careful, and, and maybe willingness to, to, uh, uh, to work for the rider to jump. But for dressage, we need so much more. And, uh, and I think the influence from the trainer on the horse is so much more than uh, uh, what we can clone that I think it, it's not really sensible. It Thank can you. be sensible with when I have, let's say, uh, the best horse in the world, but from whatever reason he was gelded as a yearling, he has bloodlines which are gone, which no one has. And then you said, okay, we make a clone from this horse and then I have the bloodlines as a stallion. Then I can use it. But that is like a really, really very small thing. But I think in our horse world, cloning is uh, not so good and it's luckily very very expensive yeah so sure. I, it, I hope that this will not become uh, something which is general i, w I wouldn't want to go to a show and see the same horse compete 23 times that, yeah, that but would the be funny thing is you don't you don't this also you don't see this you don't get the same horse i know clones yeah. uh i know uh, the 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 Let's say original one is a chestnut with a lot of color, and the next one is the chestnut without any marks, and it's a clone. So it's you don't get the exact same horse. Hmm. And again, the, you know Freud. He said, "What is the what everything what happens to you is what you are." Yeah. And I think that's the same with a little bit with 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 our dressage horses. I think there are a lot more top, top dressage horses in the world, but they don't have the luck to meet an Isabel Wert and a Laura Graves and a Adrian Lyle and, and whatever names we have. And uh, they may be doing only the third level, but they have the talent to be, become an Olympic champion, but the owner is happy with the horse. So God bless him. That's perfect. And uh, um, the, you only get a successful Grand Prix horse when this horse meets an experienced Grand Prix trainer. And maybe that's a nice word to end. Well, thank you so much for this. It's been such a wealth of information and insight and love your honesty. And I think we're all going to walk away with the image of you cantering with a cup of coffee and a newspaper. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sometimes you are so lucky to have this. <laughs> okay. We all fun. dream of that. Thank yeah. you, yeah. everybody, for joining us. Don will send out a survey to get your uh, feedback, and we'll be back okay. here next week. Again, all thank you so much. This has been marvelous. It was a pleasure. Goodbye. Thank you. Have a good evening, everybody. Bye. Thank you. Bye.